What's up guys, this is Vanilla. Not a flavor, but just sweet. And welcome to Do Not Play This Game. A series where I tell you to not play a certain game because of some features that it may have missed or it totally missed entirely. This is gonna be a first for this series. I've already done Do Not Watch This Anime for my previous roundup video, so I just thought that maybe I should start with games as well since I've played a lot of games already. And also, I got bored of talking about hentai, so let's just go with that. So, which game am I gonna talk about? Well, it's this one. Star Ocean, Integrity and Facelessness. A Star Ocean is not really that big of a series, but it is well known in the RPG community. I got the Day 1 edition and I thought it would be a good game since the cover was really captivating. And also, it's from Square Enix for some reason. So, you might be asking, What's wrong with the game? I mean, the cover looks awesome, right? Yeah, well, maybe I should start talking about the technical parts of the game. Let's go with the gameplay, or in the battle system. First of all, the gameplay is pretty broad. I mean, all you do is walk around. You don't even get to ride anything, you just walk, and walk, and walk. And then the cutscene comes in, and then you just walk. And then suddenly you're in the battle sequence. Now battles are supposed to be really fun, right? No, this gameplay is really boring, especially the battle part. Because you only get to press two buttons and you really don't have any combo freedom. Especially because there are very little skills that you can use. And most importantly, and the most irritating of all, Fidel is the only playable character. Now you can use all the other characters, but at the end of the day, Fidel is the only playable character. You can use other characters as well as the battle goes on, but when the battle ends, Fidel is the only playable character. And it's too bad. I mean, I wanted to play as someone else, but apparently, Fidel is the only playable. I <clears throat> well, that that became a uh, lose too much. And other than that, there's also the semi auto target, which I don't really get. Manual is pretty okay because, well, the closest enemy near you is the person that you'll fight. semi Odo is kind of... I don't know what's happening. On one hand, you're targeting the person close to you. On the other, it's the one which is 5 meters away from you. I don't really understand why they had to put the semi-automatic targeting there. It, it was pointless. Speaking of pointless, there's also guarding, which is completely useless even if you were able to guard against some attacks there are just so many attacks that you cannot guard and even if you try there is no point in guarding because you'll just get hit anyway so why put guard there anyway you can just put other features like dodge or side roll or something guard is technically useless in this you still get damaged even if you guard and Overall, it's just pretty much useless, so the only thing you can do is mash buttons all together. And there are only two buttons, X and Circle. And there's also the skills, but because there are very few skills, you can just abuse one skill, upgrade that a lot, and then just use that for the rest of the game. Next, we have the visuals, or the graphics, or the user interface. Now, the visuals... It's not really as bad as I thought because, well, it beats the Tales of series, but it still isn't that good enough because the world is too big. And while that's a good thing, it's not in this game, especially if your character moves so slow, you can hardly move from one place to another without looking at your phone. It's that slow. And there's just so many space that they don't even bother to put anything in it other than monsters and some harvesting stuff. And the harvesting stuff you don't even get to do until you're in the middle of the game. Not to mention, there's no quick travel. So you have to walk from one dungeon to another city, then back and forth and back and forth, which makes quests very, very tedious. If one quest asks you to go to one city, you don't get the quick travel, you have to walk all the way through the city, then the dungeon, then another dungeon, and then to the city again. Which is very tedious. I didn't want to play a game 
where I would just go run around back and forth. I want to play a game where I would help people through the quests, but apparently that's not gonna work. And yes, you do gather a spaceship later in the game, but the game is almost over before you get the spaceship. Only then do you get to quick travel, which is very tedious considering that there are so many quests that you have to finish. And yeah, there are a lot of other things as well, such as the specialties. Now, there are a lot of specialties and they're pretty unique. You can get harvesting, you can get synthesis, and you can also get this weird thing. I, I, don't, I don't know what this is supposed to do. I never really used it. Yeah, that's probably the only part that's fun. You can augment stuff, you can synthesize stuff, but away from that, there's just so little features in the game that you can do. And most of those features, you have to wait until the end game until you can use it. Last but not least, we have the PA or private actions. Now this, this pisses me off so much. Now if you're not familiar with private actions, basically it's a cutscene or a visual novel style dialogue where you have to read the story or just listen to the characters talk and well that's it you just listen to the characters talk and apparently once you talk to them enough you gain your relationship with them but for some reason you can't tell if the relationship has gotten higher or not because there is no indication on the options bar or on the main menu whatever so we have to guess if that character is going to be high in your relationship list or not. And if you're thinking that relationship doesn't really have anything to do with the story, it does. For some reason, whoever has the highest relationship with Fidel gets to have their ending. For you to get all of the endings, you have to play all over again just for one ending. And the game is 30 hours long, so that means you would have to go play the game 7 times just so you can get all of the endings. And the game just forces you for private actions which are unskippable by the way, and more on that later. Now let's talk about the story first. It's very generic. It's so generic. You have to, so basically the story is that the girl falls from the sky and then some people are going after her and then they get captured and then you get to save the girl and then the girl gets captured again and then vice versa, repeat until you finish the game. That's how the story is. It's so boring that you don't even care for the story. And even if it do, you do care for it, it just goes on for too long. Like what this cutscene right here takes on for too long. It takes 15 minutes just to finish this single cutscene. Most of the time I was just looking on my phone and doing stuff while the cutscene was going on. Not to mention, you can't skip cutscenes. This is the most irritating part because cutscenes are so freaking long, you are forced to watch it. And I would've been fine if the story was fun, but it wasn't. It's so freaking corny that you can hear it anywhere. You can see the story anywhere anyway. And again, because the story is unskippable, when you reach the final boss, oh, you're better off playing something else. Because when you fight the boss and you lose, you have to load from the very beginning. The place where you load is where you first start again. So you have to reach all of that, see all of the cutscenes, do all of the private actions, and then go to the boss. Do you know how tedious that is? Again, it's unskippable. So even if you want to go to the boss stage, you have to watch the cutscenes. And again, it's so corny. They have dialogue like this. I mean, what, what, what is that? It sounds like a grown woman as a little girl. Why is she, why is she crying? Oh, oh, stop. The music is, well, it was okay. At least it was more sci-fi-ish 
than I initially thought, but it still sounded like something I've heard before. And it was. It's from Francie Star. Yeah, it sounds very, very similar to Fantasy Star. And I mean, yes, it's supposed to be in, taken in space and stuff, but there's just so many motifs in the music that you just can't tell the difference between this and Fantasy Star. Not to mention the track on Resilient Plains, which sounds exactly like the Tales of Berseria plane theme. It just sounds so similar that you get to think maybe they copied one from the other. I don't know, but that's the music part. The characters, very generic. Actually, the characters, they are so much of a copy-paste. They copy-pasted characters from Tales of Zestiria. Not even kidding, the main character looks like the main character from Tales of Zestiria. Even the side characters, the supporting characters, the personalities are also the same. So I don't even know why they even bothered to make a character like this. They're all flat. They never go through any character developments. I think the only character development that happens is with Relia, but other than that, everyone's just flat. Even through was, there was even a time where, spoiler alert, the father of the main character dies. And after like five minutes, everyone's cool with that. Yeah, let's uh, we're just go on an adventure. What the frick, dude? Your dad just died and you're just willing to go forward without even giving a f proper funeral. I don't even understand this game anymore. Now, the settings. Now, if you've played Star Ocean, you'd know that there's a Vi universe in it. But in Star Ocean 5, you only get to explore one. And it's the main planet. And there's not even that many maps there. There's just like seven maps, like five. You pretty much go to the same maps all over again. It's not even that big anyway. And it's too bad because it's Star Ocean we're talking here. It's supposed to be of traveling to the universe and crossing the cosmos. But no, you're stuck in one planet, walking around, fighting the same enemies, just reskinned to look different. And uh, yeah, I don't really see why you should even play this game anymore. I mean, there's this hot witch who's really waifu material, but other than that, I don't really see the point in playing this game. So, overall verdict, well... I mean, it was fun in the beginning, but after you get used to it, it gets really boring. I'm not saying that repetitive games usually get boring, no. I mean, I played a hundred hours of Monster Hunter and that all you have to do is kill monsters and you go back to the town and kill monsters again. But they were able to innovate it through adding different means. Star Ocean is just copying other games and then putting it on its own and then not even adding anything creative to it. It's too bad because I really wanted to like the game even after it ended. But there really wasn't anything that would help me go back to playing New Game Plus. There's just so many flaws in this game that I don't even think that they even tried to make this game good. So 3 out of 10, what can I say? It's not really worth replaying or playing at all. Well, bye bye Star Ocean. I guess it's, play it's time to play Senran Kagura for like the 15th time. Oh.